this uh, pr prophecy. So, and at the same time, and at the same time, uh, more clot and pathology is increasing due to higher average age of patients and uh, necessity of personal medicine. So therefore it's necessary to develop uh, assistance systems uh, which can help with this workload or at least reduces. So digital pathology promises this and well, we'll see. Uh, and the first uh, is important aspect of digital pathology, the basis, so to say, uh, is of course digitization. Uh, so it, uh, digitization of slides, it can be done with this out the slides there is the plenty on the market at this moment the glass on the left side uh, are converted into digital slides on the right side uh, that can be viewed managed shared uh, and analyzed on computer monitor uh, these digital slides consist of huge amount of information so usually the billions of pixels um, it's also worth to mention that the uh, Digitalization, digitization, digitalization is entering the pathology even when examination uh, routine done with microscope. So, but what can we done actually uh, with digital pathology? So uh, the basis for further diagnostic is usually the tissue analysis. First, the type of uh, tissue is determined uh, then, uh, from this knowledge, we can derive tumor area, and as the next step, uh, we can uh, analyze closely the tumor uh, and microenvironment. For example, the cell, uh, the cells in microenvironment uh, serve as biomarkers and thus uh, therapeutic target in cancer treatment. Uh, so, digital pathology promises the good perspective. It also faces uh, many challenges, uh, many of them is not yet solved. Uh, so one of the common, for example, is the variations due to usage of different scanners for slide digit digitization. Uh, I show already the plenty of scanners on the previous slide. So basically each scanner has uh, some footprint. So in our research, we started with creating database based on the colon tissue sections uh, with adenocarcinoma in cooperation uh, with University Clinic Erlangen. Um, slides were manually annotated with seven classes, uh, which provided uh, below the slides. So this is the tumor, uh, muscle tissue, mucosa, connective fat tissue, necrosis, mucus, and inflammation tissue. Uh, so, and from this uh, annotated slides, we created the database uh, with the patches, uh, with of course the <laughs> digital patches, uh, with the size uh, 50 micrometers uh, and the digital size of uh, 224 pixels by 224 pixels. Uh, and so our database consists of uh, 92 training slides uh, with uh, more than 2 million patches and as validation part, we use the 30 slides uh, with 700,000 uh, patches. Uh, yeah, also a scan uh, will then uh, with uh, 20 uh, mag uh, magnification and the resolution of 0 0.22 micrometer per pixel. And as the next step, we extended our database to multi-scanner database. So basically we used five different scanners to digitize uh, further 39 colon sections. So the slides provide, provided in this table. So basically uh, the 30 from this slides we used as the test data and nine slides we used uh, for further experiments with the fine tuning. Uh, we also used automated an annotation transfers. So basically annotations from original uh, slides were uh, scaled and placed accordingly for the slides uh, because uh, each scanner has the different resolution and of course it influence the position of annotations so um the resolution uh, as well as the color varies between the scanners we can see this on the next slide on the left we see the the picture of uh, the different scanners 
So basically, each scanner alterate differently the original uh, glass slide. Uh, and uh, for easier visualization, of course, we, we scaled uh, each patch. So basically, each patch uh, looks differently due to different resolution. They have a pretty big variation in hue and saturation, for example, which we can see on the right side. So uh, based on the observation, uh, the slides vary most uh, mainly in color and scale. And so we focused in our uh, approach on the mimic and augmentation in this direction, in color and scale. So on the next slide, on the right side, we can see the different augmentation uh, techniques. Uh, on the first row, in each column, we can see the original patches from our data set, from our database. And uh, below, we can see artificial patches. So they were augmented uh, with all algorithms. So basically, it's uh, the good visual representation uh, with augmentation, we can cover a pretty big uh, range of uh, scanners, for example. So, and then uh, we evaluated uh, our, on our multi-scanner database. But first, I want to say that we use the uh, exception model. We fixed one architecture, which is one architecture for our investigations. So exception is well known architecture and well studied. So basically, uh, fix this this part and use this for for the uh, research. And uh, as the results, uh, we can see uh, the accuracy plot on the right. Um, I want to say that baseline uh, is the standard exception without uh, any augmentations. Uh, showed the good performance on the original slides. Well, it was expected, uh, but huge performance drop uh, on the next on the other scanners. What can be also expect because the uh, baseline was only trained and uh, well fit to the original scanner, and that's uh, uh, broadly known in the community that. Uh, transfer to other scanner is pretty difficult. So the performance drop is uh, enormous, uh, below the 40%. Only the scanner which have like, similar color appearance showed pretty decent results above the 75%. But still, it's not uh, good enough. Uh, so we cannot use baseline for, uh, for the further research. Uh, the color variation, what we found also, the color variation are more um, effective or more impactful than the variation in resolution. The scanners which, scanner which uh, have has the different resolution, um, but similar color appearance show the relatively good results, for example, in grayscale. So where the color variations is reduced due to usage only one channel, for example, the Hamamatsu scanner, uh, has the similar uh, appearance to the, to the original one, but different resolution. And we can see the scale show the performance around 90%. Uh, but of course, the best results we achieved with the combination of hue saturation and the technique called a color deconvolution, uh, because the slides in histopathology usually stained with two components, hematoxylin and eosine. That's why we have this uh, abbreviation and A. So basically, this combination of three augmentation achieved the highest results uh, across uh, different data sets. It's worth to mention also that we uh, tried the fine tuning approach. We use this in combination with augmentation. What we used is this nine slides, which I mentioned previously. So basically, we added. Uh, the second training step after after the first uh, on the original one, second was used uh, to train on the specific scanners. These nine slides uh, were only provided for the four uh, for the four scanners, and the Hamamatsu scanners were not included in this fine tuning data set. And we can see the performance drop. What can uh, what can this mean? Uh, actually, it means that. Um, this fine-tuning approach is only applicable 
uh, for this fine-tuned scanner, and we unfortunately cannot uh, robustly use this for the for the other one. Uh, what can we achieve actually with our augmentation? We achieve the robust classification on automatic scanners. So basically, on the next slides, um, I can show you the results which we achieved. The iStix scanner showed the poor performance. Um, it's worth to mention iStix is the manual uh, scanner with a with, with a camera and microscope combination. So uh, and we found that it has some uh, blurry or uh, some artifacts, and which we can actually mimic with the further augmentation. So basically, in our further work, uh, we will also add the additional types of augmentation, except uh, color and and uh, scale, uh, that's the blur, that's the occlusion patches, and uh, all our preliminary results show that uh, we can actually increase the performance on the even on the iStix uh, set or an iStix scanner. Uh, so basically, we can uh, achieve the original performance, which can show here, so over 90%. Uh, also, in our future work, we want to uh, test uh, the different uh, convolutional networks architectures. Uh, as I said, we test only exception architectures, but of course, exist many more. Uh, so that's the really wide field to test. And uh, as I said, the addition of blur augmentation has actually showed the good uh, results already. Uh, we want to develop the automated approach for increasing the robustness because it was done in some kind of manual uh, way to test different augmentations. Uh, we need to extend this to automated approach. So I wanna thank you for your attention. I'm ready for your question. Mm -hmm.